Hello, my name is Brian Shirk. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about Champagne the Argents. Uh, Champagnes are one of my favorite breeds. I've been raising them for five or six years. I've been fairly successful on the show table with them. Um, I'm going to talk briefly about type and really spend a lot of my time in depth about the, the color of Champagnes. So type is just your regular commercial type. Um, you get a rabbit that's got a nice, deep, wide, thick shoulder that's, that ha peaks at the top of that hip or at the center of the, that hip and then rounds down. You want them to be wide through the loin, wide through the hindquarter, and still a firm-bodied animal because they're considered a muscle, uh, a meat rabbit. And we have one here that you can see different. I pulled this one out first to just show you different faults where he's low in that shoulder. She hollows out of that midsection. She's decently wide in that lower hindquarter, but you can still see where she peaks too far forward. It's fairly common in the Champagne the Argent breed that the high point is fairly forward, and that's just a, a, a type fault that we're trying to work on. You can see different body styles of rabbits. Excuse this. She's a little bit more of a brood doe, so you can see she's taller off that hip, but you can see where she's narrower and she's weaker in that lower hindquarter. Um, so I'm not really going to focus too much more about type. I'm going to focus more on, I'm just going to leave her up here for a minute, more on color. So why I'm so anal or why I really focus on color when I talk about the Champagne d'Argent is because I feel like it's one of the most misjudged things in the book about rat or in the standard of perfection and when we're showing rabbits. One of the things that um, I think is a misconception is that the rabbits are to be darker and that's not true. Color is super important on the champagne when you're judging them or raising them because it's 20 points. So when people say, well, it's, it's 20 points, like types first, but hind court, like these things are, tw the 20 points on color on a champagne is the same as the 20 points on the hind quarter of New Zealand. We wouldn't pick or breed New Zealands that are pinched. Um, fur on a Havana or the lilacs, we wouldn't breed any of them with poor fur. And then the color on a Belgian hair, same point as texture on an English Angora. So it's, it's very important that we get the right color on these rabbits. And I hear a lot of people, um, my colleagues as I judge, and they'll say like, well, I pick on type first, which is important, don't get me wrong. It's uh, 20 points on hind quarter, 15 on midsection and shoulders. Yeah, and then five on head and ear. However, they, and I've heard people say, well, you gotta build the barn before you paint it. And I believe that is a breeder's philosophy, not, my, not a judging philosophy. Our, our judging standard is by the, the, the point system. And the 20 points on color is the same as a hindquarter. So we're not gonna pick a pinch champagne. We're not gonna pick a dark color, poorly colored champagne in the same reason, because our job is to judge them. When you're breeding them, yes, breed for type and then work on your color. However, um, when we're judging them, the build the barn before you paint it philosophy only works if type is that much more than the color point. So these two, these, so one of the things I want to talk about first is the under color of the rabbit. And I brought three, don't mind this one. She's a brood doe, but I love her surface color. So she's a little bit stained on the bottom, but, um, and I want to show you the difference. Now, I don't think any of these three have great, great under color, but I want to put them in order. You'll see the difference in surface as you go light to dark. We have younger rabbits and older rabbits. So what you'll see on older rabbits is more of this color where it's faded out. I don't know if you can see that far away, but it's really faded out to this, this under color that's a little bit lighter. Um, and then you get the darker rabbits usually have a little bit better under color, but it still doesn't carry all the way to the skin. So it gets a little bit lighter on that rabbit. When you get to this rabbit, you can see, can you see that well, David? Yeah. There, it goes deeper to the skin um, and it's dense there where you look at this rabbit where it's darker, but it starts to wash out at the base of that animal. And then as you get to these older seniors, sadly they start to fade and don't hold the color. It does say to give um, some leeway to our seniors uh, in their under color. I would still fault that one pretty hard. In my own barn, she stays because of a, a, a few different pieces but I really call hard on her undercolor out of her juniors. Um, one of the things that's a misconception in our book is if you look under color of Champagne d'Argent, it doesn't say black undercolor, it says dark slate blue. So whether you, would, I, I would prefer it said black, but I'm only allowed to judge on the book. You can see the difference there that it's a little bit darker than, that we, than what I would consider a slate blue. Um, but in my opinion, the darker, the better, and the deeper the color, the better. Now that's been very hard on our American style rabbits 
We are struggling with that undercolor quite a bit and people and um, the ability to call it and make it consistent to balance with these really bright surface colors. So we do allow for fading in the seniors, but remember it's just allowed for fading, not to be completely washed out like that dough there. You would fault her pretty hard. Now, it doesn't break the points apart. And that's one thing that I wish our standard did a little bit better is taken, a, taken uh, more of the opinion part out of the standard and take and said like surface colors this much, dispersal of black guard, jet black guard hairs is this much, and then under color is this much and breaking those points apart. So I just try to tell people to make them even, surface, under color, and um, dispersal of those jet black hairs because that's insanely important along with the evenness of the color which we'll get into later. So besides under color, our next big thing on the surface color that really makes a champagne is those jet black hairs. And that's what it talks about in our standard. And you can see, the best rabbit you can really see the dispersal of the jet black hairs is this doe. Even though she's broken in coat, because of the evenness of her color and the lightness of her color, you can really see the jet black hairs and the balance to the, the surface color there. Where when you get into these younger rabbits, this one's a little bit younger, but gets is like a medium shade. It's a little bit harder to see those hairs extend past that, that really silver. And then when you get into the darker style rabbits, it just kind of blends in and this is not this is not the color we're really looking for per se so it is a requirement because one of the things that you want to talk about in the when you when you look at champagnes is this is a breed you got to take your body and step it back away from whether it's your at home grooming stand or your judging table because we want this bluish white effect on the rabbits and you cannot do that over top of them really tearing them apart i always take back take a step back really look, and those guard hairs are super important in building that color. Because without those guard hairs, you really just look like you kind of have a washed out rabbit. But those give it that nice silvering effect too. That nice silvering effect. But the big thing that I like to talk about is balance of color as well that people don't um, as comment on as much as they should and as, and as breeders that we don't, that I don't feel like is focused enough as we should. So the champagne, besides the butterfly, is the same color from the front of the rabbit to the back of the rabbit, from the top of the rabbit to the bottom of the rabbit. It is tricky to get those super silver ears on them. Uh, and a lot of that, I feel, personally, has to do with the length of fur on the hair, or on the ears, excuse me, and the length of fur on the face. Now, if you look at this rabbit, she's fairly, he's fairly even in color. He should be the same color from, besides his, stop, besides his butterfly, should go all the way back to the tip of the tail, should be the same color. He gets a little bit darker, but that's really when you're getting picky. And then from the top of his back to the bottom of his feet, they should not have darker colored feet. And you can see he starts to get darker on those toes. So he's not as even about his color. Now I'm super picky on color. So in my barn, things like those are things that we notice. Obviously as people are judging rabbits or really picking through their own herds, you gotta go by what, what you have. This doe, you can see she carries it fairly even from her, her front of her face, her butterfly, is just a tick shade darker, it goes down and down the feet. She carries it well. She doesn't have those super dark feet. As this guy, if you see him, ah, 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 ah. he's got an evenest color, but he gets darker about the feet. His ears are much darker than the shade of body that he carries, and his tail gets washed out. So he's not very even, all, oh, we're getting a little multi here, but he's not very even in color compared to the others. Um, so you are to, and in our standard, it says to fault head and ears that are um, dark in color but we can allow for a slightly heavy pigment when combined with good undercolor. So it's gonna be hard for these ears to be darker or to be the same color when you got a super dark undercolor because of the length of that fur. So we do allow for slightness, um, which means you do have to take your hand off your rabbit, step back, look at the balance of color, the evenness of color, the shade of color. So there's a lot that goes into what makes our, our color specific. And you can see the different styles of rabbits. Now, the butterfly is another part of our, our color and in our mark, the one marking we got on the breed. And there's a little misconception about it. Darker, the darker the body, or the darker the butterfly, not the better. Our standard says the nose and muzzle, so the nose and muzzle region, should just be slightly darker than the body to color to form the butterfly. You're not looking for this giant contrast. We actually fault for butterflies that are too dark. 
So you can see this one is a real big contrast against that body. This one, a little bit lighter rabbit. Still, I'd consider that butterfly just slightly darker. Now, I'm not saying judge rabbits or call your rabbits based on their butterfly, but when you're looking to be at the top or you're judging a really competitive class of champagnes, these are all things you can look at to tear apart. You can look at this doe here. She's one that I would consider slightly darker. It blends in smoothly with her face. It gets very even across her, but it's just slightly darker. It's not this big jet black as if you to push these two together. You can see the difference in that slightly darker color um, on the two rabbits. And that's in the butterfly. And I really feel like when you see one, and I wish I had one that was in great coat, great fur, great color right now, but uh, I'm in Michigan and it's cold and the weather has been up and down and the rabbits have hated that. So it's been a little bit of a struggle. The real big thing that we talk about with champagnes is the shade of color. You're gonna see a lot of champagnes, just like any other breed of rabbit, you can make a lot of the bad colored ones or a lot of the bad typed ones. That's the easy part. The hard part is getting correctness. And I think what happens is we see too many champagnes that are dark and people are thinking that's the answer to the test when selecting champagnes. But we talk about an antique silver, like an antique English silver, um, which in our book talks about giving an old silver effect when viewed from a distance. This, when you see it, that's not silver. That is not bright. It's not that bright silver you see um, when you go to like antique stores or when you're thinking of antique silver. You want them to be bright. They need to be shiny. or not shiny, but they need to have this bluish white appearance to them. When you step back to the side, I would call this one more black than bluish white, right? So same thing with this one. We're getting a little bit better in color. He's got a good undercolor to him, but he's still, in my opinion, just a tick shade darker than you would want to see him. This though, even though her undercolor is what she looked, she looked hot as a senior. She had a lot more undercolor to her, but now she's just, she's getting to an old gal. But this is more what I would consider antique silver, that bluish white color when you step back from the side. And you can see as you get closer, those jet black guard hairs intersperse, and that really helps with the color. Now, in the standard of perfection, we use a terminology. We use the terminology bluish white, and I've been saying that um, fairly frequently. And I think it's very important to understand that it's not whitish blue. Bluish white means our base color is white. So there to be this bright white color with a hint of blue. Bluish white, which is a white tinge with blue. We call it cool white. Um, when you look up different colors uh, in like a Sherwin-Williams, you would see when you type in bluish white, you're gonna get a bright white color. You're not gonna get a dark color because bluish white, the base color is white with a hint of blue, okay? And that's the surface color. So our standard actually uses bluish white. The body color is to be bluish white. The whole body is to be moderately and evenly interspersed with longer jet black guard hairs. So that's the other thing. They cannot, you can see the jet black guard hairs on here, but they're shorter as where you see the difference in the two coats. You can see these black guard hairs protruding out, giving this nice silver bluish white effect because they need to be longer. When you scissor them, they should be nice and long. You do not want to get coats where they're short coated and they don't carry that nice long guard hair. This guy's got a little bit better length of that black guard hair as you zoom in there. Um, but still, it's not really that big effect which, as you get over this dough where she's malt, she's got much more length of it underneath, okay? And the biggest thing that our standard says that I don't think is, happens a lot is when viewed from a distance. So this is just a breed of rabbit. You pose it up. You don't need to go walk 10 feet back, but step back, look at the body color from top to bottom. Move your hand. Is it even? You can kind of tell when you pick it up if the feet are even and the color is very even. Now she is stained, so you're gonna falter for that in her condition points, um, and you're gonna falter for undercolor. But when it comes to surface, don't get so caught up in the undercolor that you're accepting um, rabbits with super dark color as okay. Uh, you want that balance between the dark, you want that balance between the dark undercolor and the bright surface color. And it's possible, and it's I've had rabbits with it. Uh, my mentor Willis Plank has had great rabbits with it. But you really want to look at the surface, check the undercolor, look at the length of it. How even is it from front to back, top to bottom, right? And you want to make sure you're not getting caught up in really dark butterflies or just in tight because it's 20 points. You would never pick a pinch New Zealand. That's 20 points in the hind quarter. You should never pick a dark, poorly colored Champagne d'Argent. Um, 
So just kind of like of a review of our color, faults are the lack of jet black guard hair. So I would, even though this doe might be a little bit uh, better in the under color than this doe, not by much, I would fault her because she doesn't have enough length of her jet black guard hairs. Uh, any brassiness, faded under color is a fault. It's not a DQ, but remember when you're looking at the difference of under color, stop. You're looking at the, the under color from, the, from where it leaves the silver to the base of the skin. So you're looking, that's pretty good under color. When you blow into here, that's faded and washed out. Even though it's darker, I'm still faulting this rabbit because it doesn't carry it to the skin. Another thing that I feel that we need to pay attention to is butterflies too dark, too dark and light in body color, uh, head and ears that are too dark in color to balance. But another thing I'll give you a pointer is really watch your rabbits. Uh, I have raised the champagnes, I don't get a ton of them, but they will get white spots and they're super hard to find on this rabbit. It doesn't look like she has any white spots, but if you blow in to her coat, it kind of hides in the, in the surface of the, or with that bright surface color. So you can find white spots, you just gotta be able to check them out. Now that one I think was an injury because we can see white spots when they're born for the most part. When you're raising champagnes, if you have the white that comes on the head, that's not gonna be a white spot. What I've noticed and what Willis Plank has noticed is those white spots, when they get them on the head, that little drizzle they get on their head of white when they're babies, because these guys are born all black. Those are usually come out to be our best colored champagnes. And that color bolts out, it never becomes a white spot in the skull. Um, she had a white spot when she was a baby and on her head and it molts out. She doesn't have it anymore. That, it all has under color to it. So when you're breeding them, don't think, oh my gosh, I got white spots on their head. No, 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 those are gonna be your beauties. Okay, so keep those bad boys. Um, trying to think. And then our, really our only DQs in the color are creamy color or a yellow cast. Uh, which I don't see other than like urine stains and just like poorly kept rabbits that have urine over their backs. And then um, white spots, which I've already shown you. So there is a, it is important when you're looking at the type of them, when you're really comparing rabbits. Now these guys, neither one of these guys have a great one, uh, but skulls, we get really nice big heads, big substance of ears that hold a nice shape to them. Um, the best rabbit I have in my barn is like four with that. And I didn't want to drag them out here. Um, but you can really take them apart by having a good substance of bone, good color, a nice top line, right? And when I gave this presentation at a judges conference, like it, a lot of people said like, well, this is the only color we see, so this is what we thought was right. Um, yeah, we see a lot of long bodied mini racks, right? We see a lot of long bodied uh, commercial rabbits. That doesn't make it right. It's just easy to make those. The right, the easy, the right color is bluish white, antique silver. This is not bluish white, this is not antique silver. This is too dark. Even though we see it a lot, um, it's not correct. Yes, it has a little bit darker under color to them, but usually these darker rabbits don't carry the under color to the base. So you're gonna fault them. When you get a little bit brighter rabbit, and she had really good under color as a junior, but you can see the difference. You, the, it should contrast. When they're, when they're full grown, they're in great coats, um, convention time is a great time to go through and look at the Champagne Isle and see the variety of color. But if you're allowed, if you can touch them or you can talk to a breeder, uh, this this super dark under color comes with this bright surface color. If you ever catch me in the aisle of the Champagnes at convention while I have an entry, um, I can talk about this all day long because I feel like it's one of the biggest misconceptions we're doing in the, the world of judging Champagnes. So I'd be more than willing to pull rabbits out and talk to people because that's what I like to do. Um, but yeah, especially when you put them in the rears, you can see the variety of color from light to medium to dark. And the correct color is a bright white color. Which one looks bluish white? Which one looks antique silver from afar? And it's gonna be this gal here. Now, this gal, probably if you really wanted to splice points apart, she'd beat her. She's got a bolder head. She's got a little bit better, shorter, deeper body and she carries that under color, and you can't falter a ton for her length of guard hair if we were just judging on fur, because this doe, even though she has that beautiful bright white and those long hairs, she is just too washed out in her under color, even giving her some slack for being a senior doe that's had a few litters. Okay.